I think people have boats. Right. But right. like they swim from their house through around and you know, they go around. It's like uh, there's some there's some town in Netherlands that's got the same. If their whole town is connected by canals. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Huh? Um, yeah, there's, there's so many fascinating projects and experiments going on, and, and uh, when you've got a country the size of China, China that's, that's able to, to say, okay, we're going to build a smart city, and we're going to build it from the ground up, and we're going to build that infrastructure from scratch, it's like, okay, well, what's, you, you have the resources to do that, to do that properly, or we're, we're going to go off and build an, an, a, an eco city, how is that going to work, how is that going to fit in? Is there think through all of the, the experimental ideas of how we deal with the transportation and not have to deal with legacy, right? It's just, you know. It's really weird looking at China versus the U.S. at the moment because there's, you know, being in a part of the world where you're consuming a lot of American media, right? Yeah. There's definitely a, like, the U.S. is better than China kind of outlook all the time. And Maybe I think... Maybe not in China. Certainly in the U.S. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, like, from, from the American kind of media thing. Right. But I think, like... I don't know, it's kind of weird because you definitely have, like, there's the Muslim concentration camps right now in uh, China and stuff. Right. But I don't really know anything about it, but I know that they're a thing. There's, there's, uh, I didn't actually realize, I went to go up and have uh, Uyghur food um, in D.C. when I was there. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of Uyghur cuisine? How do you spell it? U-Y-G-A-R, I think. I've read it. the Silk Road, okay. and uh, really delicious food, so it's from a imagine. meat perspective, because you get all of those, you, you, they had, um, like, so many Asian cultures have terrible desserts, um, other than the mango ice cream, but the, um, um, That feels like a really harsh judgment. Well, if you've got such delicious, if the rest of your food is so delicious, you just skip dessert and it's totally fine. I feel like that's really harsh. Green tea ice cream is also pretty good. Um, fruits, there's so many lovely fruits. I think there are a lot of really delicious Japanese desserts. I don't know that there are. Traditional ones? The beans? Oh, not, we're not talking like red bean paste. <laughs> red bean paste is not that bad. <laughs> Very American. Only if you don't have sugar. If you have sugar, red bean paste is disgusting. Because red bean paste was like what their effort to go off and create sweetness in in um, um, and and to it was yeah it was a sweetener, um, which totally makes sense unless you have cane sugar or beet sugar, in which case, like yeah. it just blows the yeah, yeah it blows it out of the water. But like I don't know, like the red bean buns are really good. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I, they've got like these like coconut jelly things. They have a lot of like jelly kind of things. Gross. I hate jelly. That's probably not because they're necessarily gross. I think that's just because you don't like jelly things. But compared to baklava, baklava is delicious. Exactly. No, <laughs> no one argues against baklava being delicious, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's some debate as to whether or not things are too sweet or too jelly, or if the texture is strange, or it's a weird bean thing in the Asian culture. <laughs> it's a weird bean thing. But nobody says, "Oh, baklava, you can't really handle that flour and the sugar and the honey and the, the pastry." pastry. Mostly just Jack Black as right. himself, but, but he's animated anime, to be a panda. But yes. it's basically the same. I mean, you can, you know, I mean, if you imagine Jack Black with his with his belly, then like it's basically the same thing. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know who Jack Black is either. Really? Yeah. The guy in the movie. What movie? I don't know. Uh, School of Rock. Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. No. He's a dude. I've seen other movies. Jack Black is the guy. 
He's a comedian. He does stuff. Right. He does kung fu only because he's anime. He doesn't do kung fu. He's a panda that does kung fu. He sucks at kung fu at first. <laughs> he's actually <laughs> trash. It's very funny. <laughs> The whole point of the first movie is that he sucks. <laughs> it would be funny if he was actually he learned kung fu in the process of you know doing the voiceover for the animated movie. That would be cool. Well, funny. the the whole upside to that movie is uh -huh. if the, to the first movie is that there's this panda who everyone makes fun of because he's fat, who can't do kung fu because he eats all the time. And then his teacher eventually. Aren't all pandas fat? Yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> As opposed, well, he's the only panda in the village. Ah, uh, okay, okay. That's the thing. Okay. Because all the pandas got wiped out. Right. Which you find out in the second movie. Okay. And then the third movie, you find out that they didn't all get wiped out. Right. But and they become love interests in the third movie? No. No love interests. No love interests. Okay. Fathers. Lots of them. Lots of fathers? Two fathers. There's Mr. Payne, who's the guy who raised him, who was a goose. And then there's... <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> there's... Uh, who makes me look? Does Mr. Payne make me Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it all makes sense. Yes. Now. And then there's uh, Lee Shan, who's his actual dad. Right. Who is a panda. Right. You know, biologically likely. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, there's... <laughs> there are a lot of scenes where it's like... Where... <laughs> Cryptography, did you look at uh, uh, cryptocurrency at all? Sort of vaguely did, then I was like, oh, that's a lot of stuff. It's a very Gotta 